Dear viewers, welcome to the weekly roundup featuring cool indie games, new unknown titles, patch news and releases. If you like this content, consider subscribing. I'm making a video every week. You can like the video for the algorithm or leave comment with some feedback or cool indie game I should check out. Thanks for joining, let's dive in. Starting with reveals and announcements. Path of Exile announced their new expansion called Siege of the Atlas, which launches February 4th. This is a very small teaser, but this looks like another maven-like creature, which makes sense because she was just a teaser in her own right and just a kid, according to the lore. Now we might have to deal with the big boys. Furthermore, PoE announced that Scourge is not going core, and I personally think that is a real shame. I think it's one of the more innovative and smooth mechanics introduced over the entire year, and while I can definitely see the implementation challenges, I feel it really added to the mapping. Who knows, maybe they'll be able to turn it into something salvageable for the future, but we won't be swapping demon worlds anytime soon, so enjoy it while you still can. LX2 announced their release date, March 1st, 2022. This is the sequel to the janky but adorable Alex, which is basically gothic in the sci-fi setting, including all quirky gameplay elements from that game. I personally liked Alex a lot, with its world, factions, sense of exploration and interesting narrative. It was rough around the edges and lacked polish, like the world the protagonist needs to survive in, but ultimately I found it rewarding once you figure out how the game actually works. Alex 2 brings the same protagonist, Jax, who needs to rescue his son, Dax, from a new threat, the so-called Sky Ants. This is not going to be a guaranteed success though, and it's definitely not for everyone this game. Even in a finished state, Alex had a whole bunch of unintuitive mechanics and really bad combat, and Alex 2 doesn't seem like like it improved a ton to be honest from the gameplay we've seen so far. Graphically it's not that impressive either. The price is 50 euros which is almost the price tag of a triple A title in the Netherlands but this is not a triple A game by any means. It doesn't have the polish so be aware of that. Nonetheless I'm still looking forward to this. Another game that will launch on the 1st of March and the game I am very much looking forward to it is Far Changing Tides. This is the sequel to Far Lone Sails from 2018, which was just a beautiful indie game with a unique art style, a serene soundtrack and a small adventure which I still vividly remember to this day. You played a small person operating a massive machine in search for a relative. It had puzzle solving, but mostly you just traversed impressive hand-drawn landscapes in what the devs called a meditative experience. Far Changing Tides should offer this same meditative experience, but this time in a water world. You are still a small person operating this massive machine, but rather than a sailboat on wheels, you now have a floating device, which seemed to be diving as well, and I can't wait to get my hands on this title. For me personally, one of the most anticipated games for this year. It will launch March 1st for 20 euros. King Arthur Night Still postponed its launch from February 15 to March 29, so 6 weeks. Night Still, according to Steam, is a unique hybrid between turn-based tactical games and traditional character-centric RPGs. Night Still is a modern retelling of a classic Arthurian mythology story filtered through the dark fantasy tropes, with a twist on the traditional tales of chivalry. The game is currently in early access, you can pick it up for 35 euros and the Steam user rating is 7. It looks interesting enough and is made by Neocore Games, the studio behind Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr and Van Helsing, both great ARPGs. Proceeding with the Patch Plaza, bringing an overview of patch news, this section remains empty for another week. The gaming world is definitely waking up again and this episode is more filled than the last one with more games, but new content isn't there just yet. Then releases. I found an interesting trailer of Nobody Saves the World in which you are a pale androgynous humanoid who find a magical wand which can turn you into pretty much anything. A ranger, a monk, a horse, a mouse, it doesn't matter. You can use these various forms to progress the plot. It's made by the creators of Guacamelee. It features a similar recognizable art style and tongue-in-cheek humor and you can probably tell by the trailer if this is for you. The release is on January 17th and it will be on PC Game Pass as well. If you have that, which I do, you can play this for free. 
Expeditions Rome, a strategic turn-based RPG with a strong narrative in which your choices matter, releases January 20th. This is the third Expeditions installment after Viking and Conquistador, and this time you are a young Legatus or Legatus, whose father was murdered by an unknown political opponent, forcing you to escape Rome and take refuge in the military campaign to subdue a Greek rebellion. Step by step you increase your military prowess, strengthen yourself in the forge of combat and become the person everyone learns to both respect and to fear. There is a demo available already and the game will be sold for 35 euros. Blackwind is a hack and slash shooter platformer sci-fi action game that puts you against hordes of enemies in frantic battles in a desperate attempt to stop a planetary invasion. The game puts you in the shoes of a teenager trapped inside a prototype battle armor suit during an alien invasion. Good story. According to the devs, the game is story driven though, with you playing through story locations rather than random arenas like you would in Anvil. Other differentiating features are finishing moves and a cute battle drone to do your bidding. The game is developed by Drakkar Devs, a small Indian studio that made titles like Clash of Puppets, Monkey Boxing and Monkey Racing. I'm sure you've all played those. It releases on January 20th, the price is not known yet. Time for some personal updates. What have I been up to? I've been playing some Anvil multiplayer with some people from the Discord. This was a lot of fun and even with people using voice communication this game remains bloody hard. I get the feeling you really need to keep grinding the first galaxy a couple of hours in order to get enough skill points and perks and relics to have a fighting chance in the second galaxy. Right now the second galaxy is totally kicking my ass and there is even a third one. Another game I am putting significant hours into, again, is the Slormancer. They released a patch months ago, but I'm finally diving into it and once again I'm having a great time with this cute little indie game. I made some sort of cast when channeling Whirlwind build which is a lot of fun to play and I'm grinding Endgame while listening to Lex Friedman podcasts. There is a decent chance I'll be turning this build into a build guide and I'm planning a gameplay slice on Endgame for this one, showing both expeditions and the new Slorm Temple. Speaking about the gameplay slices, I've made three so far and they're being fairly well received. Based on the games I will play they will gain more traction of course, but I think they're here to stay. I enjoy making them and they stand out enough from your standard first impressions video because I've thought about the content I want to present up front and I try to really provide value and insight into the gameplay mechanics. I'm thinking of maybe adding a pros and cons at the end, especially once I played a good number of hours like with the Slormancer, that might be a good addition. Otherwise though I am pretty content with the format and you seem to like it as well which is great. And that's it. If you have any questions or remarks put them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and you want more like this consider liking the video or even subscribing. Thanks for watching and for making it to the end. Love you all. See you soon. Bye bye.